In today's lesson, we are going to talk about special angles in trigonometry. But before we start talking about that one, we are going to try to refresh our memory about what we learned previously in grade 10. If you remember, when you are dealing with any, any right triangle, very important right triangle, okay, meaning one of the angles is 90 degrees, we can define the following trig ratios. The first one is the sine x, meaning that if you have any angle, let's say x given here, sine of this angle is defined as opposite, which is this side, divided by hypotenuse. We define the cos of any angle x is the side adjacent, which is here, divided by hypotenuse again. And we define the tangent of the angle x to be the side opposite, divided by adjacent. These are the ones that you learned previously. If you remember, we used the acronym SOKATOA. And this was the one that we used to memorize the trig ratios. S stands for sine, O stands for opposite, and H stands for hypotenuse. C stands for cos, A stands for adjacent, and H stands for hypotenuse again. T stands for tan, O stands for opposite, and A stands again for adjacent. This was the acronym we used to use to memorize the above three ratios. Now what are we going to learn in this section and in this unit is to find a way to find the primary trig ratios for any angle between 0 and 360. Now to accomplish this one we need some special angles that we are going to try to find the value for each of those trig ratios. But before we do that, we are going to talk about a new term called unit circle. It is very simple. We define a unit circle is a circle which has the origin at the origin of Cartesian coordinate system and the radius to be 1. So this is what we call a unit circle. Any point on this circle is going to have a coordinate of x and y. Now, if you remember from your grade 10, for a circle which has the origin at the origin of the Cartesian coordinate system, the equation of the circle becomes x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. But in a unit circle, r is equal to 1, radius is 1, so this becomes 1. So any point on the circle has the x and y coordinate which is related with this equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. We are not going to define two new terms. One is called initial arm and the other one is called the terminal arm. In general, when you draw an angle like this one, you are talking about two sides. One side and the second side. Now, in our definition, we have two types of angles, either positive or negative. An angle is positive if, when you start from one side to another side of the angle, you go in counterclockwise direction. So this angle, if we go from this line to here, because we are going to go in a counterclockwise direction, it's a positive one. If we go from this side to this side, because we are going in clockwise direction, the angle is going to be treated as negative. Now, this means that when you are picking the initial arm, pick the one that when you go to the terminal arm, you're going to end up going in counterclockwise direction. We define the initial arm 
which is shown here, to be the one which is in one of the lines of a Cartesian coordinate system. The terminal arm, which is the second arm of the angle, which is again shown here, is the one which goes through the origin okay and when you go from initial arm to terminal arm you are going to go in a counterclockwise direction to get a positive angle which is the one which is shown here we define an angle to be in standard position when the initial arm is on the positive x-axis so if this is my Cartesian coordinate system if my initial arm is here on the positive x-axis and the terminal arm to be somewhere which goes through the origin then I say that this angle is in standard position now when your st angle is an acute angle meaning less than 90 degrees then we say the angle is a reference angle now reference angle is very very important the reason is that you will see later on that in this unit we are going to deal with angles which are greater than 90 for instance 130 degrees or 285 degrees or 310 degrees these angles obviously they are not reference angle because they are greater than 90 so somehow we should be able to change these angles to an angle which is less than 90 degrees so we can use the special angles that we are going to cover later on we are going to talk about how to change or how to find the reference angle corresponding to any angle which is greater than 90 degrees later on in this video the first example is the 45 45 90 rule which we needed for finding the three ratios of special angles now what this one is asking is a right triangle like this one 90 degrees one angle is 45 since the sum is 180 the other angle has to be 45 too now let's see what is the relationship between the sides here let's assume that hypotenuse is a then let's say we want to find any other sides let's say this one is C since the angles are equal here this has to be a right isosceles triangle this means that if this one is C this has to be C2 so by Pythagorean theorem I can write C squared plus C squared is A squared so I can say 2C squared is A squared or from here I can find if I divide by 2 I get c squared is equal to square root of a squared over 2 if I bring a squared out I get a over square root of 2 which is the same as saying a times 1 over square root of 2 but if we rationalize the denominator I get a times square root of 2 over 2 I multiply this by square root of t, this, and this one by square root of 2. So this means that in any triangle, which right triangle with one angle to be 45, the, sh the legs are going to be square root of 2 over 2 times the hypotenuse. This is very important identity that we are going to see the use later on in this video. The next example is to prove 30 16 90 rule. This means that if you have <coughs> a right triangle like this one, this is 90. If this is, let's say, 30 and this is 60, 
We have to find a relationship between the sides. Let's for, at the moment, let's assume that this side is A. Okay? And we have to find what is the hypotenuse and what is the other side, assuming that A is the shortest side here. Now, to, pr to prove this rule, I'm going to draw an equilateral triangle with one side is equal to A. Since it's equilateral, this side has to be A and this side has to be A. Another property of equilateral triangle is that the angles inside the triangle, they are all equal to 60 degrees. Now, if I draw the altitude of this equilateral triangle, meaning a line which is perpendicular here, and other properties that is going to make the base into equal half. So this one is going to be A over 2, and this one is going to be A over 2. Now, let's see what is exactly is this altitude length here. I'm using the Pythagorean theorem, and I'm going to say if the altitude is B, then I'm going to say B squared plus A over 2 squared is A squared. From here, if I bring this one to the right, I get B squared is a squared minus b over 2 a over 2 squared is going to give me a squared over 4 I multiply this one by 4 divide by 4 I get 4 a squared over 4 minus a squared over 4 which is going to give me 3 a squared over 4 I take the square root of both sides I get b is equal to a square root of 3 over 2. So this means that this height or altitude is a square root of 3 over 2. Now, the altitude in an equilateral triangle is going to divide also the angle into two equal parts. So if this is 60, the whole thing, this one has to be 30, and this is has to be 30. So if you look at this triangle, this is going to be exactly like this triangle. You have 30, 60, and 90. If the hypotenuse is A, we found that this side is A over 2, and this side is A square root of 3 over 2. So we found, or we proved the 30, 60, 90 rule that the hypotenuse, this one, is twice as long as the shorter side because 2 times a over 2 is going to be a which is, this means that the hypotenuse is twice the length and if you look at this side, you can see that the other ba uh, uh, side is going to be square root of square root of 3 times the shorter side, which is this property. So we just proved the 30, 60, 90 rule. And you will see how we can use it to find the trig ratios for special angles. Now again, if we look at a circle with the center at the origin and uh, with the radius equal to r, any point on the circle which has the coordinate x and y using the Pythagorean theorem in this triangle, the right triangle, I can write that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. This is a given fact. Now look at any angle like this one which is given here, theta. I can write that sine theta is opposite which is going to be y over r and cos theta is adjacent which is x over hypotenuse which is r so in general I can write that y is equal to r 
sine theta and x is equal to r cos theta. So instead of writing x and y, I can write x is r cos theta and y is r sine theta. Now, just imagine that r is equal to 1, meaning that this is a unit circle. If this is the case, then we know that r is equal to 1, so this becomes cos theta sine theta. So for any unit circle, the x value of any point on the circle is really the cosine of the angle and the y value is the sine of the angle. I'm going to use this fact to prove the special uh, the trig ratios for special angles. Again, let's now consider a unit circle and let's find the sine, cos, and tan of special angles. The special angles that we are going to talk about are 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. These are the special angles that we are going to talk about. And we are going to find the three ratios, the three of them, for each one of these angles. So let's see what exactly is the sine, cos, and tan for angle zero. <clears throat> let's draw a unit circle. Angle theta is the angle which our terminal arm is going to make with x axis. Now this is zero, so this means that our terminal arm is going to be on the x-axis. Now on the x-axis, we can see that this point is going to have the coordinate 1 and 0, because our radius is 1, this is 1. So the x value is 1 and the cos is 0. Now <clears throat> remember that we said here that any point on the circle is going to have the x value equal to cos theta and sine theta is the y value. This means that for angle 0, cos of 0 is going to be the x value which is going to be 1 and the sine of 0 is going to be the value 0. So this is the first one. For angle 0, the cos is 1 and the sine is 0. Now, <clears throat> for the tan, remember that if we look at this circle, the tan is defined as opposite over adjacent, which is y over x. So this means that if I divide y by x, I get the tan of the angle. Now for angle 0, the tan is going to be y which is going to be equal to 0, so tan 0 is going to be <coughs> our y value, which is going to be 0, divided by our x value, which is 1, so this gives us 0. So again, sine 0 is 0, cosine 0 is 1, and tan 0 is going to give us 0. Now we are going to try to find the sine, cos, and tan for angle 30. So for angle 30, I'm going to again draw a unit circle. Again, the radius is 1, <coughs> and this is 30 degrees. Now, this is the point that I have to find x and y here. Now, if you remember, if I draw the perpendicular line here, this is 30, so this becomes 60. So this triangle becomes 30, 60, 90. Now, the radius, we know it's 1. This is 30 degrees, and this is 60. Obviously, this side 
is going to be greater than this side. So the, the side in front of angle 30 is going to be the shortest side. The side in front of angle 60, which is here, is going to be the one which is in between. And hypotenuse, as usual, is going to be the longest side. Now, with 30, 60, 90 property that we proved before, we said that the hypotenuse is twice the shortest side. So this means that this has to be 1 over 2. And this side is going to be square root of 3 times this side. So it's going to be square root of 3 over 2. <coughs> Knowing these values, I can easily write that sine 30 is going to be equal to opposite, which is 1 over 2, divided by hypotenuse, which is 1, which is the same as saying 1 over 2 divided by 1 over 1, which is 1 over 2 times, flip the second fraction, which is 1 over 1, 1 which is going to be 1 over 2. So sine 30 is going to be 1 over 2. Cos 30 is going to be adjacent, which is square root of 3 over 2, divided by hypotenuse, which is 1. So it's going to be z square root of 3 over 2, divided by 1 over 1. Flip the second fraction and multiply, so you get square root of 3 over 2 times 1 over 1, which is square root of 3 over 2. So we found that cos of 30 is square root of 3 over 2, sine of 30 is 1 over 2. Now, tan of 30 <coughs> is going to be opposite, which is 1 over 2, divided by adjacent, which is square root of 3 over 2, which is 1 over 2, divided by square root of 3 over 2, which is the same as 1 over 2 times 2 over square root of 3. 2 crosses with 2. 2, we get 1 over square root of 3. If we rationalize the denominator, we multiply this guy by square root of 3 and this one by square root of 3. So the answer is square root of 3 over 3. So we found that for angle 30, sine is 1 over 2, cos is square root of 3 over 2, and tan is square root of 3 over 3. <coughs> now, <coughs> At the same time, since we are in this triangle, we can find the sine and cos and tan of angle 60, because we do have 60 right here. We can write that sine 60 is equal to opposite, which is this side, square root of 3 over 2, divided by hypotenuse, which is 1, which is going to give us square root of 3 over 2. Cos 60 is going to be adjacent. Adjacent to angle 60 is 1 over 2, divided by hypotenuse, which is 1 over 2. And tan 60 is opposite, which is square root of 3 over 2, divided by adjacent, which is 1 over 2, which is the same as square root of 3 over 2, divided by 1 over 2, which can be written as a square root of 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. This one goes with this one, so it becomes square root of 3. So, for sine 60, it's square root of 3 over 2. For cos 60, is 1 over 2. And for 10, 60 is square root of 3. So we found for angle 0, for angle 30, and for angle 60. Now we are going to find for angle 45. Now again we are going to draw the unit circle. We, we are looking for angle 45, so this is 45. We draw the perpendicular line, which is 90, so this angle is also 45. We found out if the radius is 1, because it's unit circle, we found out that in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, 
the relationship is that these two sides, this side and this side, are square root of square root of 2 over 2 of the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is 1, so this guy is square root of 2 over 2 times 1, and this guy is square root of 2 over 2 times 1, which is the same as square root of 2 over 2. Now, knowing this one, I can again write that sine 45 is opposite, which is square root of 2 over 2 over hypotenuse 1, so it's square root of 2 over 2, cos 45 is adjacent, which is square root of 2 over 2 divided by 1, which is square root of 2 over 2, and tan 45 if is opposite square root of 2 over 2 over adjacent, which is square root of 2 over 2, they cancel each other, which is going to be 1. So we found that sine 45 and cos 45 are the same, and which is equal to square root of 2 over 2, and tan 45 is going to be 1. And the last one is for angle 90 degrees. Now again, for 90 degrees, I'm going to draw the unit circle. Again, angle 90 is going to be calculated based on the x-axis. So I'm going to start here counterclockwise, so angle 90 is going to be end up here so this is 90 now this is a unit circle so this is 1 so from here I get the coordinate of this point is going to be 0 and 1 we know that the y value of the point on the unit circle represents the sine value so this means that this value means it's sine 90 and the y value represents, the x value represents the cosine. So we say that cos of 0 is going to be 0. <coughs> to find the tan, we found out before, in this case, remember, tan theta in this triangle is equal to opposite, which is y over x. So now, the y value is this, which is 1, and the x value is here, which is 0. And y, 1 over 0, as we know, is undefined. So this means that 10 of 90 is not defined, because you're going to get you know, a number divided by 0. So these were the special angles, and we, sh we could find them using the basic, you know, uh, rules, 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90 rules that we proved previously. The first question is, the third question is to use the unit circle to find the exact values of trigonometric ratios for 0, 90, 180, and 270. Again, if I draw the unit circle, remember that the unit circle, the radius is 1. So this point, which represents angle 0, we know that it's 1 and 0. This one is 0, 1. This one is going to be negative 1 and 0. And this one represents 0 and negative 1. <coughs> Remember that we said that any point x and y, y represents sine of the angle. So this one represents sine 0, this one represents sine 90, this one represents sine 180, and this one represents sine 270 degrees. <coughs> and the x value represents the cos. So here, this is cos 0. This one represents cos 90. This one represents cos 180 or pi. And this one represents cos 
270. Now, <clears throat> remember, uh, there are two types of angles that we are dealing with. One is the degrees, like this. This is the way we show it. And the other one is in terms of radian. The only thing you have to remember is that uh, angle zero in both degree and the radian is equal to zero but angle let's say 90 degrees is pi over 2 in radian angle 180 is equal to pi and angle 270 degrees is equal to 3 pi over 2 and angle 360 degrees is 2 pi If we draw the unit circle, then we can have a circle as it's shown here with different angles, the special angles 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90, and you can see the values of sine and cos given here. Remember the y value represents the sine. So this represents sine of 0, this represents sine of 30 degrees, this represents sine of 45, this represents sine of 60, and this represents sine of 90. The y value represents the cos, so this represents cos of 0, this represents cos of 30, this is cos 45, and this is cos 60, and this is cos 90. If we go with uh, angles bigger than 90 degrees, we will do this exactly the same thing but the only thing you have to remember is that first of all if this is your unit circle this one from 0 to 90 is called quadrant 1 from 90 to 180 is called quadrant 2 from 180 to 70 is called quadrant 3 and from 270 to 360 is called quadrant 4 so quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4. And you always go counterclockwise for positive angles. Now, if you also remember that any point on the unit circle, which is represented by x and y, the y coordinate is sine of angle, and the x coordinate is cosine of the angle. Now, if we are in the first quadrant here you can see that your x and y values are positive this means that sine and cos are positive if you are in the second quadrant which is here you can see that your x values are negative this means that cos is negative so cos is negative but y values are still positive so this means sine is positive. If you go to quadrant 3 you can see that x is negative, y is negative. So this means that cos is negative, sine is negative. If you go to quadrant 4 you can see that x is positive but y is negative. Since y is sine theta so this means sine theta is negative but cos theta, which is x, is going to be positive. So always remember this one. Now the other thing is that there are cases that your angle is not going to be 90 degrees. It's going to be more than 90 degrees. Let's say, as I said, 120 degrees, 190 degrees, 280 degrees, and so forth. How are we going to use the special angles to find the trig ratios for those angles. What you have to do is to have to find the reference angle. Remember the reference angle is an angle which has the initial arm on the positive x axis and the terminal arm any angle between 0 and 90 degree. So this is called a reference angle. But the thing is that how do you find the reference angle if the angle is in quadrant 2 or 3 or 4? It's very simple. If the angle is in quadrant 2, again here, then what you do is that you just subtr 
subtract the angle from 180. So 100 minus theta, the angle. If the angle is quadrant 3 here, then what you do is that you are going to subtract 180 from the angle. So you're going to say theta minus 180. And if the angle is in quadrant 3, what you are going to do is that you are going to subtract angle from the 360. So you're going to say 360 minus theta. This is how you find the reference angle. To give you an example, for instance, if the angle is 155, you will say, oh, okay, 155 goes in the second quadrant, so to find the reference angle, I'm going to subtract 155 from 180, so I'm going to say 180 minus 155 is going to give me 25 degrees. So my reference angle, 25 degrees, is going to be in the first quadrant. If your angle is, let's say, is 200, the 200 goes in the third tri uh, quadrant, and we said that in the third quadrant, you subtract 180 from the angle. So it's going to be 200 minus 180, which is going to be 20 degrees. Again, it's going to fall inside the first quadrant. Or if your angle is 310 degrees, then you say that it's going to fall in the fourth quadrant, so I'm going to subtract this one from 360. So the angle becomes 50 degrees. That's going to be your reference angle. Now the question is that how can I memorize all those special angles? It's very simple. The way you do it is that when you are in a test or if you are doing your uh, homework or whatever, if you need the values for special angles, you're just going to write you know, a table like this one. You know the special angles are 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. And you need sine, cos, and tan of the angles. Okay? So you're going to draw a table like this one. And you are going to start writing from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then you put the square root over these numbers. And then divide it by 2. Here, for cos, you're going to start from 4 now. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and you put square root again, and then divide it by 2, the same thing. Now, if you look at this one, and the one on the table here, you will see that you get exactly the same thing. Now, for tan theta, you know that tan theta is going to be y over x we found it before now y if you remember y is sine theta and x is cos theta so this means that you divide this value by this value you get the sine theta now square root of 0 over 2 is going to give you 0 square root of 4 over 2 is going to give you 2 over 2 which is going to be 1 so 0 over 1 is going to give you 0. Square root of 1 for this one is the same as 1 over 2. Now 1 over 2 divided by square root of 3. 1 over 2 divided by square root of 3 over 2 is the same as 1 over 2 times 2 over square root of 3. is going to give you 1 over square root of 3 or rationalizing it multiply by square root of 3 you get square root of 3 over 3 so this is square root of 3 over 3 this one square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2 gives you 1 for, for uh, 60 degrees again 10 is y over x and we know that y is represented by sine theta so this time is going to be square root of 3 
over 2 divided by square root of 1 is 1 so divided by 2 so it's going to be square root of 3 over 2 times 2 over 1 they cancel each other so it's going to be square root of 3 so this is square root of 3 now for 90 degrees we know that the cos of 90 is square root of 0 over 2 which is going to be 0 now 10 is y over x and y is sine theta so it's going to be square root of 1 over 2 which is 1 over 2 divided by 0 which is going to be undefined so this is how you can memorize your special angle table again for sine and theta is very simple you start writing numbers for sine 0 1 2 3 4 then write the square root over them then divide everything by 2 for cos start with 4 3 2 1 0 write the square root over them and then divide everything by 2 for tan theta you just have to divide you know y by x which is sine divided by cos and you get the table